to Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Michael Hart, TrueLiteracy.in, and we're back today with our very special guest, Rachel Berger, and we're going to talk about a second Microsoft EdTech tool that is just an extraordinary support for our kids who have learning differences. So uh, before I introduce um, Rachel formally, I want to talk a little bit about her background. She is the uh, president and executive director of Decoding Dyslexia for the state of Minnesota. And specific to Microsoft, she is a dyslexia and learning disabilities consultant for them. But I think most importantly, she's also a mom of a child who has some learning differences. So it's gonna really kind of, it helps us really bring it home in terms of um, the meaning and value of these tools that we have, because it's been, Tremendously helpful for, uh, I know, at least one of her sons. So today we're going to talk about uh, Microsoft's Immersive Reader and specifically with regard to how we use that on Word Online and then Word in the usual uh, Office package. So, Rachel, thank you very much for coming today. You're welcome. And I think the thank smartest you, thing for me, yeah, thank you. Uh, I think the smartest thing for me to do is to get out of your way. And okay. so you pull up your screen and I'll just, if I have questions, I'll interrupt. And if not, we'll just walk through some of the cool things that the Immersive Reader does. Great. Okay, so going to screen share here. And we're gonna start out in Word Desktop. So this is the, can you see my screen right now, Michael? Yep, perfect. Okay, so this is the desktop version of Word. And we wanted to talk about how Immersive Reader functions um, and, and read aloud as well, function within Word desktop to help um, create accessibility. So I've got two different things. Right now you'll see in my Word document here, I'm under the review tab because it's underlined here in blue. And I could simply use the read aloud function if I wanted to have just the document read to me, um, just speech to text. So I could click on Animal that. biodiversity, it's higher taxonomic uniqueness, and the rarity of that. However, I've been demonstrating for you in these video series, um, Immersive Reader and the capabilities built in there that um, not only help people with speech to text, but also help them to be able to personalize how they wanna consume that content. So we're gonna go under our view tab here. And then that's where we have Immersive Reader and really you know, the whole um, learning tools um, capabilities. So we clicked on, um, I'm sorry, let's just repeat that for you guys. So we went under the view tab, we clicked on immersive reader, and then from there we can, um, oops, here we go. from there we can use the read aloud feature, which I just showed you, mm -hmm. but we can also personalize. Um, so again, let's say that maybe we wanted to have our words broken into um, syllables. And so all the while the document's reading, um, you're able to read along with it, with your syllables broken down. And let's say that um, maybe we want to have some spacing in here um, because otherwise everything's really tightly kerned together and that can cause a lot of visual eye strain for people. Um, not just people with dyslexia, not just people with convergence insufficiency, which affects a very small percentage of the population, but anybody can be impacted by that. So we also have the ability, um, you'll notice mine, um, I think mine was already changed. Oh, I guess it wasn't. I just can't see very well. Um, so you can change the background colors um, and you have the ability to choose uh, what, what works best for you. So let's assume that maybe black text on white is not, um, is, not, is not a very appealing to you. So we can change it to having a black background with white text. And um, you know, lastly, there's a feature called column width. And so we could change it to being very narrow or um, wide or just normal. So again, all of these features are built in to enable the user to personalize how they want to consume that content because we can't assume that everybody prefers to read in the same way uh, because we know uh, they don't. Let me ask you a question. What about font size? How do you change font size? We don't have a changing of the font size right now. That has to do with how someone saved the document. So right now when you're looking at tiny font, that's my fault. I saved the document that way. 
Okay, so that's that's a good point though. All I have to do is change the font size of the document in its original form. Yep, yep, just yep. change it in the document. Because again, we're using this feature within a document that's already created. So right. all we do from here is is click on. Habitat. The Amazon is also considered to be a distinct principle. And then, um, you know, again, if we close the immersive reader, we can, um, you know, change the font size like you you had asked about. So again, that was that was me and the settings initially. So um, you know, you have all of those features built in and right there available to you to enable you to more effectively um, take part in accessing the documents that you read. Okay, so is Immersive Reader baked into a certain version or do we have to go and download it first? If you would not download Immersive Reader into Word, it's built in. Okay. Um, it's built into Office 365 and Windows 10. Okay. So it, it should just readily exist. In fact, most people don't even know it's there. Um, but when you think about it, a lot of times we have different features um, I mean, look at this ribbon up here with all of these different things. I wouldn't, I wouldn't know what all of these are, you know? Absolutely. So, yep. So it's just there. One of those things that you don't think um, of checking necessarily. So review tab is just the read aloud feature. If you're not wanting to um, change or alter the text and how you, how you view that while it's reading and then view tab an immersive reader is how you're going to change all of those capabilities so that you can read along and you have um, the ability to personalize it. Okay. So now we're going to go over to Word Online, which is through Edge Browser. And I'm going to show you how these features look there and how to access them. So Edge Browser is Microsoft's search engine. Um, if you look at my toolbar down at the bottom here, you'll see um, this little circle of rainbow that is Google, and obviously that's a very widely known search engine. Many people don't know that Microsoft has their own through Edge Browser, and that <laughs> is, um, I know, right? Uh, but I'm guilty as charged, as you can see from this text ribbon down here, so I use both. The reason you wanna be able to use Edge is you can get, um, you can get all of these features in here, as I've shown you before, Dr. Hart, but also accessing Word Online, and OneNote online, though that's where you're going to access those tools. And then all of these features are automatically updated um, and offered through that. So here we are in Word Online, and I've got a document pulled up here. Um, and so you'll notice if you watched our OneNote videos that this looks a little bit similar to OneNote. And so these features are gonna be exact as they were in OneNote. The only difference you're gonna find is when you're using these tools in Word Desktop. So um, that, that's where it looks differently and mainly because Word was created for writing. So um, these different things are, are created in a way to make all of it accessible. So we're gonna go under our View tab and then we have Immersive Reader and we click on that and it's gonna put a skin over top of the page and I'm going to move this down here and then we're going to push play and we're going to see how not only does immersive reader work on reading a document, but it also works to read um, many different languages um, that we have in, in documents. Here is an example of American English being spoken. French. Spanish. Chinese. Chinese. Arabic. German. Okay, so you can see that we have the capabilities built in to read many different language languages. I think we're up to about 45 different languages currently. Um, always adding more capabilities around that. And then what I want to show you is these features over here. So much like you learned in OneNote, We've got our text preferences up here to the right. So again, assuming that we all have different desires for consuming content, we can increase our text sizing. Uh, we can click this button and increase our spacing. We've got our font possibilities down here. And then again, those background colors as you saw before. 
Um, ooh, that's distracting there. So under our grammar options, we have syllableification with just the click of a button. We've got our parts of speech. And again, this is the ability to highlight parts of speech so um, and, and choose the colors so they don't con conflict with the background. Um, really helpful to students in language arts, um, beginning around those, you know, upper elementary, middle school ages. This is a really helpful tool for my son, um, who just can't seem to remember what a noun, verb, or adjective is. It just really kind of takes some of the difficult work away. You can show the labels above or not. Um, some of my favorite features um, built in here are under reading preferences. And again, um, we can choose our line focus mode here. So we can focus on one line at a time, three lines, five oh, lines, or oh. none at all. What? I just said, oh, wow. You know, this is so yeah, my favorite. specific and relevant for our kids. Then we've got picture dictionary, which, um, you know, I've got a document pulled up that has multiple languages. So it's gonna, it's gonna be a little bit different, but here you can see, I can click on a word and it's going to help me create meaning by giving me a picture. Um, I'm curious to try a couple others, even though I don't speak French. So this is done in conjunction with BoardMaker and they're a company that creates a lot of the visual images for people who are nonverbal or need help in communication disorders. Um, so those, those, um, those are just wonderful to have. And then lastly, again, we have the ability to translate um, a, either just a word or a document to another language. So again, that's under Word Online um, through Edge Browser, and that, that's how you get these capabilities built in um, for consuming content. Okay, all right, really fabulous. So two points I wanna make. We like to keep these short and clean for mm -hmm. people. Yep. But two, two points I wanna make, and one point I made in the first video that we did together was that, I mean, this is a, um, a very specific revolution, a very specific jump in our ed tech abilities to be able to support our kids with learning differences. And my opinion is it's the it's the most it's the most incredible thing that's happened in all the years, my 30 years of being in this business. Secondly, I think the the very cool thing about this is that you can take any document and embed it into this tool so that you're not, you know, it's not like a walled garden, like some of the bookshare organizations or other things like that. It's something where it, no matter what it is, you're able to lay these tools on top of it and make use of the tools in order for you to prepare uh, whatever it is you need to do with regard to the document. That's, uh, that's fair to say and accurate, right? Yeah, that and I think the thing that makes it, you know, for me really appealing and, you know, also amazes me is that they're all built under one roof, so to speak. So Dr. Hart, you probably have, you know, seen enough of the different um, assistive tech things that, that we've had over the past number of years where, sure, I can have, I can have um, text to speech, but I've got to move out of what I'm doing and open up a new app. I've probably got to pay for it as well. And then, um, you know, there's a lot of shifting around. So when it's all under one roof and it's treated as accessibility, is something we all have a right to, not just, um, you know, oh, it's a pay for additional service. I think we're really making gains for individuals of all abilities when we treat it that way versus, um, versus the way it has been looked at before. And I can yeah. tell you as a parent, um, you know, it's really stigmatizing to feel like, only those who can afford the additional things are, are the ones that are going to get access. I mean, access is something for everybody. It shouldn't even have to be asked for. It should just be there. Mm -hmm. So um, I feel better as, as a citizen knowing that this is something that everybody can take part in um, yeah. accessing. Yep. And of course, one of my major markets is India and I've never seen uh, a culture of people who have been more interested in best practices and really wanting to do the very best for their kids and their education. So uh, thanks very much for this presentation. Um, I, well, like I said, I want to keep them. Oh, pardon me? More to come. We got yes, to I was just going to say we got more. Yeah, this is just the second in a series and, and Rachel has been so gracious 
to give her time so that we can do this. And I'm going to do everything I can in my, my little way to spread out this uh, information far and wide uh, through social media and through all kinds of other platforms that I have so that as many people as possible can find out about these tools and how to make it happen. So finally, Rachel, thank you very much. And we're looking forward to seeing you again soon. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, that should do it. Okay. We made it. No glitch.